Hi guys, Jurassic Junkie here, and this week I actually squealed while playing a game. Welcome to the Friday Night Run. So yes, it wasn't a girly squeal, it was a proper man squeal, more of a raw than anything, but yeah, I've been playing um, Amnesia. I actually forgot it then, which is like amnesia, see what I did there? But um, no, I've been playing Amnesia this week, and it's an absolute brilliant game. Some people might say it's not the scariest game in the world. It was voted the scariest by gaming Unity users, but still, it's just refreshing to play something like that, and it sets the tension really, really well. And I've not played a scary game like this ever, I don't think. I've played scary games, but this one's really got me, and uh, there's a few bits in it that does pop up and I don't want to ever say anything just in case anyone goes to play it but yeah check out Amnesia because it's absolutely awesome so cracking on first of all last week I said that I'm on a diet so I can't have beer blah 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 but I've just had a kebab I had a pot of mints that is actually 120% of my daily intake of sugar so to be fair it's all out of the window today so kind of fosters nothing special I've had it before and I'm just going to go straight out of the camp because we are constrained for time. It's about nine o'clock and I've got three hours to get this before it turns into Saturday morning run. So, cracking on them. First thing I want to rant about this week is sabotage. Now you may be thinking, Jurassic Junkie, what is this new game that you're going to tell us? No, just people sabotaging things. And um, <clears throat> what it is, is I don't know if anyone's ever seen these before, but they've got these tiny little figures by the name of Keys or Monies, got several different names. The idea is you draw your own character on it and then you have your own figure. And um, Joe brought me these at Christmas, I've not utilised them yet, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to crack on. <sighs> so with me playing Super Meat Boy at the moment, I don't know if you can quite tell, but there is a Super Meat Boy face kind of etched on there, ready to be done. So before I actually got to drawing his face, I thought, you know what, I need to do a few designs first, do them on paper, so I shall show you now as I'm talking. And then, um, yeah, sketch Super Meat Boy, I was quite happy with the drawing, I thought that's quite good. And then it struck me, I thought, I'm a thirsty man. So I popped to the shops to grab myself a couple of cans of Fosters. And then when I returned, I came back to sabotage. That is a picture of a slime taking a dick. And that was drawn by my lovely girlfriend, Jo. So thank you very much, Jo, for drawing a f***ing dick across my character. To be fair, the only way to get back at someone is eye for an eye. So... <coughs> You draw a dick on my slime, I draw a monocle on your slime. Not really, you think I'm going to do that? I'm in the doghouse for the next month. So, yes, sabotage the first thing on the list. But, all serious then, gaming, gaming topics is EA. And no, we're not going to play any sound because EA's not done something this week to annoy me. But they've actually um, been interviewed. What it is, is Peter Moore, the COO of EA, was questioned simply because they obviously won the worst company in America uh, this year. And it was just simply saying, why do you think you're so hated? So Peter Moore came on and he's done an interview. And I was reading what he had to say and I can kind of half agree with what he says. And it was simply saying that, obviously, EA's made your point. The, the point of EA is, obviously, to create money. Without money, you don't make games. So, obviously, you need to make money. So, I agree with that. And he went on to say some bullshit as, the tallest trees catch the biggest breezes, which is just crap. And so, you're saying, because we're so big, that's why we're going to get so much flack. Well, to be fair, Google is quite big, and they don't get as much flack as EA. So, that's just bullshit. But what he was saying is, this is what I kind of agree with. Um... When you come into gaming, obviously you create games, but things change over time and the way we actually buy content also changes. So they're saying sometimes they go into something blind and they have to have a feel around and see if it works and sticks. So I can understand if they actually did something, for instance, I don't know, day one DLC, and they tried it just to see if it would work. Uh, but the point of trying something is if it doesn't work, you stop doing it. And this is what I don't think he understands. He was saying, yeah, well, sometimes we have to try things. And OK, you do. But when they fail, don't do them again. And that's partly to blame is you. So <laughs> I'll go on to that in a minute. But what they were saying is obviously they try these different tactics, try and get money and uh, just see if they stick kind of thing. And OK, you need to try these different things. But I want to just point your interest at Ubisoft. Now, Ubisoft is fast becoming my best 
company developers at the moment because I just love what Ubisoft do. And I found something the other day, which has been there for ages, I've never really seen it, and I definitely want to educate you on this because I think it's absolutely awesome for the people that don't know about it. And it's Ubisoft's Uplay. Now, if you've ever played a game like Assassin's Creed, when you first pop the disc in, sometimes it says, would you like to sign into Uplay, you passport, and you'll be able to get in-game achievements. And I've always gone, that's the you just created something that's not needed, I'll get my achievements for Xbox, thank you, not bothered. And always just ignored it. Now, I'm actually going through playing Ghost Recon at the moment, which is a very good game, by the way. And, um, yeah, it was saying, would you like to sign into your Uplay account? So, you know what, I'm going to sign up, I'm going to jump into it. And I realised I already created an account many moons ago, so I signed into that. And I was playing for an occasionally little achievement pop-up. I thought, well, what's the point of this? I'm not too bothered. So I went into the actual Uplay side of it, because there's a programme you can launch. And when you're in there, it simply says that within every game that's actually got this Uplay built into it, there is four achievements to get for the game. So the first achievement will be 10 points, second 20, 30, then 40. So a total of 100 points if you get all four. But at the same time, they'll give you four pieces of DLC for free, but each one costs points. So in theory, if you get all four achievements, you can then get all four pieces of DLC for free. So at first I thought, well, that's a bloody good idea. Well done, Ubisoft. And the best thing they've actually done is the points that you can earn from any game within this Uplay, you can spend in any other game. So my friend James logged in and he noticed he had actually got 110 points that he didn't even know about. And that's because he signed in through his uh, Assassin's Creed, played the games, earned the points, and now he's just put in a brand new game, goes to the Ghost Recon download section, and he can spend his Assassin's Creed points on some maps for the actual Ghost Recon, which is awesome. I love the idea you can play a game and spend it all. Now, this is what I'm saying that EA doesn't get. It's not about taking the money, it's about motivating people to buy your games. Now, a lot of people are saying, I don't want to buy EA, I don't want to buy EA, and the problem is, you've got to buy EA if you want the particular titles. Whereas Ubisoft have done something so clever now, the fact is, if I go into a shop now, and I'm going, mm, mulling around, what shall I buy, I'm not too sure. If I see it's a Ubisoft game, I'm definitely going to buy the Ubisoft over anything at the moment, because I don't know, no, no, if I get that game, I'm going to go home, I'm going to play it, I'm going to earn some Ubisoft points. And even if I don't want that download content in that game, I'm not bothered, because I'll be building my points up, knowing when a future game comes out, if I get it and go, you know what, I love this game, I want the DLC for it, I can spend all my Ubisoft points and get free DLC. So, in theory, yes, they're giving something away, for free but they're actually going to get more money out of it now because they're going to buy more Ubisoft games because of this brilliant feature so if you don't know about it you do now start logging into Ubisoft and earning your points because it's an absolutely awesome idea and two this brings us back now to EA so EA have got it wrong they're just trying to do it in the wrong way and I think they just need to change the tactics completely and it just makes me laugh how they kind of just shrug it off and just say yeah you need to try these things but the problem is now that, for instance, if a car manufacturer does something which offends you and you go, you know what, I don't want to buy your products anymore, you don't. You go to another car manufacturer and the thing is then, they'll get your money, the other people won't get your money and they will realise, they'll go, you know what, you voted with your wallet, we've taken a hit this month and they change the way they work. And that's how the world works, apart from in gaming. So, as it was actually pointed out within this article, games are a completely different thing because you can't go... I don't want to buy that Mass Effect, I'll get my Mass Effect elsewhere because you can only get your Mass Effect through EA. So with games, sometimes even if you don't like the people behind it, you will still buy it because you want that game. So the thing is, the only way to kind of stop day one DLC is to stop buying it. So you've got to vote with your wallets when it comes down to the actual DLC side. So I've said this many times before, but it's not about saying I'm not buying EA games anymore. It's about saying I'm not buying the EA push down your throat content and then they will listen because they're a company. They will look at their stats and figures and go, that didn't do well. So you need to vote with your wallet to make the stuff stop. So that's enough aside, we've done 10 minutes into that, cut it down, probably six, don't know, we'll see. But one thing I wanted to talk about as well this week is Amazon. So, as you know, the Wii U hasn't properly got a release date um, or any prices or anything like that, unless you look at Amazon. Because Amazon reckon the Wii U is going for £199.99p and it's going to be, let me have a quick look, July the 14th it's been shipped apparently for Amazon. So this little thing that popped up on Amazon's website um, got quite a lot of attention 
including Joe's attention, so she went straight in there and whipped it up at £199, which is a good deal, really, it seems as everyone else is saying it's going to be about £279, so £79 off what we should be paying. So she put it through and went, is this actually going to work? And about an hour later, Amazon sent her an email and says, congratulations, your order's gone through, and we will be shipping your console within the next three weeks or so. So it was a bit shocked. We thought, it's probably not going to turn up within three weeks. But the thing is, we've got our order in now for a £199 console, which is awesome. But then two days ago, Amazon just turned around and practically went, they're all cancelled, we're not doing them. Which is annoying me. Now, don't get me wrong, if it was a cock-up and they accidentally put it on there for a penny and a million people would order it, I can understand them cancelling it. But at the end of the day, they put that on there for £199. People went to buy it for 199 and now they're saying, no, you can't have it. And I think they should just go, you know what, I'll cock up, we'll take the hit, and just sell it for 199 So it's a bit of a bastard that they've actually pulled that away. But Joe's put a complaint in, many of us have put a complaint in, so we'll see how we go with that one, but chances are we probably won't get it at 199 But bad Amazon. Not been massive amounts in the news that I want to actually talk about this week, but obviously everybody's saying E3, 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 and all the stuff that happened at E3. But it made me think, actually, there's one thing which... We did have, from the get-go, very early on, and it kind of got phased down, and I want to see it come back, and I don't know why it's not being utilised. And what that is, is face scanning. I remember when I first got my Xbox 360 three years ago, and bear in mind I used to be a PC gamer all the time, so I did the switch onto consoles, fell in love with my 360. One of the things that actually shocked me was when I actually bought Rainbow Six, um, I also had the webcam, and it says, if you want, you can scan your face in. So I stood there, stood there, face on, took about two, three minutes to actually run it through, but then it actually scanned my face in and put it on my in-game character. And I thought, you know what, this is absolutely brilliant. And um, when we were doing all the missions, they knew who I was because they could look and see my face and go, there's Tom. And we knew everything about each other. And I thought, it's really, really good. And I thought, I'd love to see that rolled out to like Call of Duties, for instance, because in that game, you go through shooting millions of different people. And it'd be awesome to actually go, that was a teenager I just shot there, or I just shot a woman in the face. And, that sounds quite bad, I shot one with the face, but yeah. The point is, it will be more of a personalised experience when we're actually fighting against people or driving, or it ain't always got to be murder. But it'll be nice to actually see faces on the characters instead of the just generic avatars that we create. And that kind of got phased out, and I've not seen it in many games since. And with the E3 coming, I remember saying, I hope they kind of bring it back, and nothing's been said. And I just think it's a sad thing. I want to see face scanning brought back into it. And hopefully, I'm going to say Wii U. I want that to cash into it, because you've got your nice webcam on the front of there. So I'm saying the Wii should cash in on scanning faces, and it would just be more interesting to see who the person is you're actually playing against. So that's it, it's 13 minutes, I've got a few other things to talk about on here, but the simple thing is I've got to edit this and upload it on slow internet, so I'm going to have to cut it short now. So as I said at the very start of the Friday Night Rant was, I was scared by playing a game. And I just want to know, what's the scariest moment in a game? In fact, scratch that, not even scariest. Have you ever screamed out loud? So it can be a girly yelp or it can be a manly scream, whatever it is. Has a game ever actually got you where you've just gone, Aah! That at. And if so, what game and what moment? Apart from if it's actually during, I forgot the name, which falls in line with Amnesia. If you've actually played Amnesia and you're going to say a particular part in the game of Amnesia made you scared, please don't say that because I haven't completed it all yet, so I don't want no spoilers. But that's it. I've got four days left of work, which is awesome as always, but then I'm off for two weeks, so I promise I'm going to crack on with all my game reviews because I've got them stuck piling up to here and I just need to get them out, so I haven't had the time. But I hope you have a great weekend, guys. I'm going to polish this beer off, sit back, and play some Super Meat Boy. Cheers, guys. Bye.